from God's presence. <laughs> Glory. Welcome to, what is today anyways? Sunday. <laughs> Praise God. <sighs> you know, there's no time or space in the spirit. Amen. In fact, we're taken out of time. And you get sucked out of time. That's how God transports people. Oh, the reality of what's happening right now is phenomenal. Things are being exposed. Wickedness is being exposed. And God is calling his people in a stern way but a loving way. He's saying, tighten up. Tighten up because I'm coming. And I, my judgment is being released already in all the earth. And you know that it begins in the house of God. Those that call themselves Christians better prove that you're a Christian. Or you'll be exposed. We are entering a season of prosperity. We're entering a season of power. It, sometimes it doesn't seem it like all the stuff that's going on out there, but that's not a part of us. What goes on with the world is of the world. What goes on in the kingdom is of the kingdom. It's two different things. Oh, glory. Are you maintaining your blessed routine? Good. It's important. <laughs> Go to Psalm 45, please. <laughs> Whew. And the Father looks for true worshipers who worship him in truth and spirit. I don't know if you've seen about other things being exposed right now like that. What's it called? Mayfair? Wayfair? Wayfair? That Wayfair organization is nothing but a pedophile selling of children. Does everybody get it? So stop buying from them. They have their children's names on some of these products. They're selling children. You can buy a pillow for $10,000. That means you can buy a child for $10,000. There's things being exposed tremendously. We are in such a time of transition, a time of exposure, a time of corruption that is being exposed. But we are in a time of transition, which is good. We are in the fire. Remember, <laughs> what's today, the 12th? Praise God, I remember that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just two and a half more months. <laughs> That's just to get through the first part. <laughs> but it's okay. You know, one of the things, it doesn't matter. Everything is about trusting God. That's what it's about, just holding on to him and trusting him, what he says, what his promise is, holding on, holding on, holding on, getting your houses in order, getting everything in order, getting your temples in order, getting your attitude in order. Don't look at what you don't have. Thank God what you have. Quit asking for more when you haven't used what he gave you. <laughs> Psalm 45, verse 1, let's speak it together. My heart is overflowing with a what? Good theme. I recite my composition concerning the king. Now, are we called to be kings? Yes. Are we called to be priests? Yes. My tongue is a pen of the ready writer. In other words, your tongue is writing your destiny. Is everybody with me? called we're talking about today the tongue of destiny your tongue is writing your destiny verse 2 for you are fairer than the sons of men 
Grace is poured upon your lips. In other words, God's plan. Therefore, God has blessed you forever. Gird your sword upon your thigh, O mighty one, or mighty warriors. Listen, I know this is a dual, uh, it's a dual release because he's talking about the anointed offsprings, which is me and you, and the anointed one and his anointing. We are now the carriers of the sword. Amen. He said, you are fairer than the sons of men. Uh, the, the, the plan of escape, it's called grace, is poured upon your lips. Therefore, God has blessed you. Gird your sword upon your thigh, you mighty ones, with your glory and your majesty. And in your majesty, ride prosperously because of the what? The truth, humility, and what? Righteousness. See, this is a message to the offspring, the anointed one, as kings of territories, restrainers of evil, and the enforce, enforcers of righteousness and justice. He's saying, your truth, humility, and righteousness will come forth from your mouth. Your right hand shall teach you awesome things. Your arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies. The peoples fall under you. In other words, we have dominion. Remember, what is power? Positional overseer with the eternal realm. That's what power is. You and I have been granted power. We are positioned overseers with the eternal realm. We are restrainers. See, most people don't even know who they are. They only know themselves as a Christian. And they don't even know what really truly a Christian is. Only what the label's been. So they carry a label of a Christian, but they have no fight. They have no presence, no spirit, no nothing. Oh, they go to church. They pay their tithes. They're good people. But they're not a threat to the kingdom of darkness. That's what a Christian truly is, a threat to the kingdom of darkness. How can you call yourself a Christian if you ain't a threat to evil? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's given us a warning here. He says, your tongue is a weapon of the spirit. It is the tongue of destiny. It will write out your destiny. You are to have the tongue of the truth, humility, and righteousness. And he says, you will prosper. You will prosper in all things, in health, in wealth, and in battles. We have entered a whole new season because we're entering a whole new world. I don't know if you've seen it or not. You may go to places and they're gonna, there's a lie out there that says, hi, we need more uh, correct change because there's a shortage of coins. You're going to see it more and more and more. Remember, we're in the transition right now because change will be removed from the... Money will be removed. We'll be entering the cashless society. Everything is in preparation. Now, I want you to grab hold of this because everything is going to turn to the good for a period of time. And then the enemy will take it over because God will allow it. Remember, everything is turning to the good in preparation to the bride. We're getting blessed. Does everybody get it? Things are happening. The world is different than the kingdom. We've got to begin to see this. But if you're of the world, you're going to go through their stuff. If you're sta still attached and entangled in the world affairs, then th that's where you'll be. But the kingdom, the bride, is moving forward. The body of Christ, remember the bride comes out of the body. Not everyone in the, in the body is of the bride. There's a difference. So we are advancing now. We are moving. Things are happening. You're going to see more shakings, more earthquakes, more pestilence, more lies. More deception, but everything's turning to a one world order. But it's okay for now because we're not a part of that one world order. We're off world. Amen. We belong to a totally different kingdom. But there is a transition happening. It's going to turn to the good. The world's going to see the goodness of God. They're going to see the power of His presence. They're going to see people uh, freed and so forth. They're going to see hearts turns, turn to the Lord. And they're also going to get to see the destruction of the wicked. In James chapter 3. 
But what's vitally important for me and you is because our tongue is writing out our destiny. Not knowing the Word of God and saying no to the Word of God is a terrible thing. James 3. Now the Spirit started off with the tongue of destiny because He's leading us to something vitally important. In verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. My brother, not let not many. Is anybody there? <laughs> Come on, y'all have a tongue here. Write it. <laughs> My brother, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. For we all stumble many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able to bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may what? Obey us, and we turn their whole body. Look also at the ships, although they are so large and driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles? And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men. We have been made in the stimulitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessings and cursings. My brethren, these things ought not to be. These things ought not. In other words, God is warning us. He's warning us to know, listen, your tongue is bringing your own judgment. Your tongue is writing the course of your destiny, your tongue. Somebody got it? Proverbs 18. Why? It defiles the whole body. Amen? Your tongue, my tongue, our tongues. Remember, you and the Spirit of God is breath. Amen? It's breath. Everything is upheld by the breath of God. His, wor his breath carries the word. The word manifests. So you and I were created by his word. Amen. We were actually created by dust, which was made by his word. But now we're born again by his word. Amen. Through his spirit. So in this, things are moving by the breath of God. Creation is still creating. There are a lot of people being born again. They're being recreated again. So in this, what comes out of your mouth does not fall to the ground. It is written. And either the demonic forces pick it up and come at you, or the angels pick them up and work for you. One or the other. So when you know stuff's coming out of your mouth, that isn't right. Stop. And repent. Put it under the blood before the demons pick it up and kick your butt. Does everybody get it? People bring sickness on themselves and not even realize it. They take communion without true repentance. See, because they really don't know the word or really believe the word, they just say, just, eh, it's just a word. It's a book. 
Tell that to Jesus when you stand before him. But I thought it was just a, no. His words were written for me and you to recite them. Amen? And his spirit is still moving because there's not enough words of God to be held in a book. So his spirit still sp speaks through us. Amen? Oh, glory. Psalm 1820, uh, Proverbs 1820, I'm sorry. Did I say Psalms? What's going on right now is there's agitation. There's so much evil in the atmosphere. There's so much prejudice in the atmosphere. There's hatred in the atmosphere. So you're going to have to keep the presence of God and drive out the world's atmosphere around you. That's why assembling is essential. Worship is essential. Amen? It's important. And then eating the, the word, which keeps the fire going, too. So right now, we, we see it all over. I mean, the media is promoting all kinds of stuff. I mean, wickedness is, I mean, it's, they're just irritation. You can sense it. People are reacting everywhere. In verse 20, is everybody there? A man's stomach shall be what? Satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. From the produce of his lips, he shall be what? Filled. In other words, what you speak is what you eat. Does everybody get it? What you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you become. So not only do the powers of darkness or the angels pick up what you're speaking, but you're reaping what you speak. Everybody okay? Verse 21. Death and life are in the what? Power of the tongue. And those who love it will what? Eat its fruit. Wow. The tongue of destiny. You know, there's a, you've ever heard of uh, saying food for thought? Think about that. Food for thought. Food for thought. That means thought is food. Does everybody get it? Food for thought. <laughs> It's a warning of digesting deceptive foods of thought. Because people speak what they think too quickly. Food for thought. The enemy knows it's food. Did you ever get around someone who just can't shut up? It's when you carry an extra sock. Make sure it's clean. Psalm 19. <laughs> we have a big binky in my office. It's about yay big. We call it the binky award. When somebody can't shut up enough, they, I put it around them. And you can squeeze it and it makes a sound. So they can walk around that day as the Binky Award, and anybody can squeeze it. It's been in my office for a long time. I've only had to use it once. Hallelujah. It was quite interesting. <laughs> Psalm 19, verse 12. All glory. <laughs> Is everybody there? Well, let's speak it together. In verse 12, who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults. Now, what are secret faults? Thoughts of food. <laughs> secret faults, things that you think. That you're still fighting with that desire. That's a secret fault that's displeasing to God. It's against the character of Christ. It's always promoting the desire of self. I want, I want, I don't have. It's always an I syndrome. It's a secret fault. Why? Because it promotes self. Amen? He said, who can understand his errors? Who can understand his 
ungodly desires. Cleanse me from the secret faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. We call that assuming. Don't assume. Wait. If you don't know what to do, wait. Amen? God will make a way if you trust him, if you believe him. Or if you're still in your flesh, then you can't wait. And then you're going to sow in the flesh, you're going to reap more corruption, and you're going to stay in that cycle and be miserable and never get a breakthrough. People, there are people that are 30, 40 years being Christians that have never gotten a true breakthrough. Number one, they can't they have no dominion over their mouth. And are constantly just quickly speaking whatever they think. They live by their emotions, not by truth. Anxious, anxious, anxious. Very anxious. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins and let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be what? Then I shall be blameless as I what? Wait on the Lord. Trust in the Lord. And I shall be innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. Hello. Now what your heart is the core of all desire. Your mouth will express those things. That's why you know someone, what comes out of their mouth. How are you going to, what are fruits, desires? You'll know them by their fruits. What are they always talking about? What are they always wanting? Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Man, what's he saying? He's saying, listen, <laughs> protect your heart. Discern what's going on. The heart, core of desires, and the mouth is a releaser and the revealer of the heart. Your mouth is the releaser and the revealer of your heart. Now, those things that come into your heart come in by thought. So you must be able to discern what food is of God and what is not. And right now we know that the corruption and the destruction against the United States and the righteous and the kingdom of God is being promoted by the media because they're releasing deceptive food. Amen? Psalm 141. Oh, happy days. Psalm 141. In verse 1, we'll read, speak the first five verses. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Oh, this is a good one. <laughs> Lord, I cry out to you. Make haste to me. Give ear to my voice when I cry out to you. Let my what? My what? My prayer. My mouth open. My words. My, let my prayer be set before you as a what? Incense. Let me tell you, there are some prayers where God just turns his head. Sheesh. Selfish prayers. The word says, seek ye the kingdom of God, and all things will be added to. But it says, seek his righteousness. See, if people would just do that, they'd know something's coming good. But they really don't have trust. They're in fear. They want everything done now. Drive through. Let my prayer be set before you as an incense. Do you want God, do you want God to be, your prayers to be an incense to him? Well, praise God. Then you better pray what he wants. Amen? Let, and the lifting of my what? Hands as a what? Evening sacrifice. Praise God. So don't go half mass. Amen? Like you owe me something. Surrender. <laughs> Glory. Let's go a little further. Verse 3. Are you ready now? 
Set a guard, O Lord, over my what? My mouth. Tie my tongue into a bow. Keep watch over the door of my what? Lips. Do not incline my heart, in other words, the desires of my heart, to any what? Evil thing. To practice wicked works with men who work iniquity. Don't let me eat of their what? Delicacies, food of thought. Let the righteous smack me, strike me, kick me, awake me. It shall be a kindness. Now here's a humble dude trying to rebuke it. Some people, they're so full of pride. The first words out of their mouth is going to be, you're judging me. Tell them, you're right. I am judging the fruit of your tongue, and it's disgusting. It promotes nothing but self and not the ways of Christ. Let the righteous strike me. It shall be a kindness. Let him rebuke me. It shall be an excellent oil. Let my head not refuse it, and let not my what? Thoughts refuse it. For still my prayers against the what? The deeds of the wicked. Does everybody see that? To do what? To overthrow their judges on the sides of the cliff, that they hear my words, which they are sweet. In other words, here's the guy. He said, put a guard over my heart, over my mouth, with discernment, to reject wicked food for thought that I may only release edification, correction, and warning to righteousness and destruction to the wicked. Does everybody get it? See, this is where his, heart, his heart's at. His heart's been exchanged. See, there's an exchange of heart. Man, let me tell you, when your heart's exchanged, you are totally a different person. You're not the same person. You're not still doing the same old things. You're maintaining a blessed routine to kick butt. You realize that you don't have a life no more. That the life that you have now is to bring the life of Christ in because time is short, time is running out, and we need to gather as many souls as possible. But you're not going to gather a soul if you're not a witness. Amen? Some people run from people. Hallelujah. Now demons may run from you, but that's okay. Psalm 140. You don't have far to go. Let's speak at verse 1. Deliver me, O Lord, from what? Evil men. Preserve me from violent men. I think we can pray this prayer for today. <laughs> Who plan evil things in their what? In their hearts, they continually gather together for war. They sharpen their tongues like a serpent, and poison of asses under their lips. In other words, the wicked plan evil in their heart to attack the righteous and cause them to desire wickedness. This poison is a poison of desires which tries to bring mind control on people, puts them in a trance. Verse 4, keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from violent men who have purpose to make my steps stumble. The proud have hidden a snare for me and cords. They have spread a net by the wayside. They have set up traps for me. I said to the Lord, you are my God. Hear the voice of my supplication, O Lord. O oh God, the Lord, the strength of my salvation, you have covered my head in a day of battle. In other words, he's covered your thoughts. He's protected your thoughts. Why? Because we're in a spiritual battle, isn't it? Do not grant, O oh Lord, the desires of the wicked. Do not further his wicked scheme, lest they be what? Exalted. For as the head of of those who surround me, let the evil of their lips cover them. Let it go back to them. Let burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the fire, into deep pits that they rise not up again. Let not the slander be established in the earth. Let evil hunt a violent man to overthrow him. I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and justice for the poor. 
Surely the righteous shall give thanks to your name. The upright shall dwell in your presence. So the end result was maintaining the presence of God. Where many lack. They try to live by the letter, but they're not cooperating with the letter because they have no presence of the power of God. Amen? So we see that evil then is evil, uh, evil of their lips return to them. Amen? As they're speaking evil. That's what his prayer was. Let the evil return to them. Amen? He calls burning coals on them. You know, the word says, forgive and bless them, and coals of fire come on them. So when your enemy is, a, you know, acting up, why don't just bless them, forgive them, and walk away? Hallelujah. Uh, Jeremiah 8. Good warfare prayer. Oh, hallelujah. Again, we've got to maintain an attitude of warfare. Does everybody understand? I'm maintaining an attitude of warfare. It doesn't mean that you're out there being, you know, paranoid and accusing everyone of everything, you know. You just, you just maintain an attitude of warfare. In other words, you're ready to attack. Amen? You're ready to resist. First thing you need to do is resist. Amen? <clears throat> and Jeremiah 8 and verse 4. <laughs> Jeremiah 8 verse 4. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Hallelujah. Moreover, you shall say to them, thus says the Lord, will they fall and not rise? Will one turn away and not return? Why has this people slidden back? Jer Jerusalem in a perpetual what? Backsliding. They hold fast to what? They hold fast to what? Deception. I mean, you see it in the whole world, right? They refuse to return. I listened and heard, but they did not speak aright. No man repented of his wickedness, saying, what have I done? Everyone turned to his own course as a horse rushes into the battle. Even the stork in the heavens know the appointed times, and the turtle dove, the swift, the swift and the swallow, observe the time of their coming. But my people do not know the judgment of the Lord. Wow. How can you say we are wise? And the law of the Lord is with us. Look, the false pen of the scribes certainly works falsehood. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Behold, they have rejected the word of the Lord. So what wisdom do they have? Therefore, I'll give their wives to others. Why is that going to happen? Because marriages are going to be destroyed. And their fields to those who will inherit them. Because from the least even to the greatest, everyone is given to what? Covetousness. Me, myself, and I syndrome. From the prophet even to the priest, everyone deals what? Falsely. For they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? No, they were not at all ashamed, nor did they know how to blush. Therefore, they shall fall among those who fall in the time of their punishment. They shall be cast down, says the Lord. Now, I want you to know he's talking about the wicked. Amen. And anyone that's associating with wickedness. Wicked and evil corruption followers have entered a state of perpetual backsliding. Why? From any righteousness, because they hold to the lies of agendas of corruption. They, they, they digest their evil delicacies. See, receiving something and digesting something is two different things. Because when you really receive something, then you put it to practice. Amen? In Matthew 13,
Glory. Matthew 13, verse 10. Is everybody there? Anybody there? Praise God. <laughs> Let's speak it. And the disciples came and said to Jesus, Why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered and said to them, Because it's been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. Does everybody get that? Do you realize that to you it's been known the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but the world doesn't know? That's why they don't understand you. For whoever has to him more will be what? Given. And he will have abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of these people have grown what? Dull, hard, rejective. Their ears are hard of hearing, their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and do what? And turn so that I should what? So that I should what? Heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For assuredly I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desire to see what you see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. Therefore hear the parable of the sower. Now he's going to explain everything. And when anyone hears the word of God, the word of the kingdom, and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who received seed by the wayside. So again, why? Because there was no fight or seek to keep it. It just went, okay. Many people come in and to services when the word is released, don't really accept it as the word of God. They accept it as just a written letter. Oh, I've heard this, you know. Not knowing that God speaks at a time in the time that we gather and a time to you specifically. Amen? So in that, these were individuals just, oh, okay. Yeah, I heard it. Okay, no problem. But they never really absorbed it. They didn't fight to keep it. They didn't fight to put it into practice. They just heard it. And again, the word says they heard it with no faith. See, faith grabs hold of it and uses it. Man, you can run across many people who quote scriptures, right? I mean, they even know the page number. They're not walking the way they should. Their tongue is already ready for destruction and deceptive. Verse 20. But he who received the seed or the word on the stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. He's grateful, yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he would. He does what? He stumbles. In other words, he doesn't water it. He's not adding to it. He's not allowing the Holy Spirit to take dominion. Verse 22. Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. Wow, no protection. Why? Not enough assembling. Not enough assemble. Verse 23. But he who receives seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it. Listen, you can hear knowledge. Okay, so knowledge comes out of the word of God, but it doesn't become truth until it's understood. Now it becomes truth. When it becomes truth, it's to be put into practice. Other than that, you're just hearing words. But he who receives Seed or the word on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it. Why? Because he digests it and puts it to work. Who indeed, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Why? Because there are hearers who understand, they digest, put it to practice by assembling and following and cooperation and obedience. Ephesians 4.
glory. Verse 20. Tongue of destiny. <clears throat> Ephesians 4.20. What does it say? But you have not what? You have not so learned Christ. You haven't learned the anointing. You haven't learned how to get into God's presence. You haven't learned how to be obedient yet. You haven't learned how to surrender yet. You haven't learned. You've heard, 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 but don't put it to practice. Always learning, 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 but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Not learn to die to self, to fight and follow. I mean, that was the character of Christ, wasn't it? He was in places always learn, showing us how to deny self, deny self. He's anything that he did, he said, I was about my father's business. But you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you had heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you what? Put off concerning your former conduct, which means deny yourself. The old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, thoughts, that you put on the new man, the new creation, putting on a new man with your tongue of destiny. Man, you know somebody who's new when they got a new tongue. I was a cursing sailor at one time. I don't know why they always use sailors as cursing, but everyone that I knew that was a sailor was a cursor. So <laughs> In fact, the Marines and everyone else. <laughs> there wasn't too many of them that were uh, upright, let's say. <laughs> and that was the first thing, one of the first things my wife recognized about me. My mouth changed. There was no cursing. It was totally different. My language was different. Because I was no longer of the world. Not only that I live in the world, but I wasn't of the world anymore. That was the first thing she recognized when she saw me. Of course, she called me an alien because she didn't know what else. But my words are different. And my character was different. It still baffles me. <laughs> it ain't something you can learn. You don't learn those things. People try to change them their lives by learning through books and whatever. You can't. You know how you change God's presence. Just get in his presence and fall at his feet. And then he begins to take you, surrendering to him all the time. Glory to God. Verse 24, that you put on the new man, a new creation, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, putting away lying, let each of you speak truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Be angry and don't sin. Be careful. Not to go over the boundaries. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Forgive and bless. Nor give place to the devil. And he warns us, okay, this is how you're going to give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer. Be honest. But rather let him labor, working with his hands. What is good that he may have something to give him who has need. Let no what? Corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. But what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace or a way of escape <laughs> to the hearer. And do not grieve. Do not grieve or offend the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. And he's going to let you know, you want to grieve the Holy Spirit, let it come out of your mouth. You want the Holy Spirit to step back? What comes out of your mouth will cause him to. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary occasion that it may impart grace and hear, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Verse 31, let all what? Bitterness. Well, bitterness is in the heart, isn't it? And it's going to come out of the mouth. Wrath. Anger. See, there are people who still haven't gotten over their divorces. They're still blaming the other person. There are people who still haven't gotten over their sexual abuse. There are people who still not gotten over things. What's been wrong to them. 
or with the, they're still blaming other people. That grieves the spirit when it comes out of your mouth. But you don't know what happened to me. Who cares? God knows. You don't have to tell everybody else what happened to you. Amen. Now, again, unless it's for a testimony of Christ. Yes, the Lord brought me through this. I was abused, but praise God, I forgive him. I bless them. Let the coal come down. Who cares? Amen. And as the coal comes down, they're going to fall to their knees and repent. I pray every wicked person gets arrested and put into jail of salvation. They give them an opportunity to get saved. But man, we need to get over all of this stuff. Anything that's still attached to your past, you're still attached to the past. You can't. See, the enemy always tries to bring your past up to the future. Even your sicknesses and disease you had from your past. Does everybody get this? That's how he operates. Once you open your mouth and agree with it, bam, that's right there walking right next to you. Hi, I'm back. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Why? Because you have a tongue of destiny. You have a life and death in your tongue. You have the power to remove powers of darkness or invite them. You have the power to choose. And if you grieve the Holy Spirit and he steps back, believe me, you don't want to do that. Because the powers of darkness are all waiting for that. Get them to grieve the spirit. Quick. I'm hungry. Demons are hungry, you know. In fact, they're starving. Although they're getting quite fed right now in the world. Getting fat and lazy. Hallelujah. So they've not learned Christ. Amen. Isaiah 60. Isaiah 60. Are you ready for this? This is a place God, this is, this is the word the Lord is bringing you now. This is what's shaking. Isaiah 60. How many of you know God knows it all? If you don't, I'm going to tell you that right now. You know, there isn't anything he doesn't know, and he's always trying to get us to that place where it's going to work to the good. Just grab hold of my hand. Exchange your heart. I know you're in pain. I know this. I know. He knows it all. Just wait on me. And quit grumbling, complaining, and grieving the Spirit. You want him comfort. You know, when you're in distress and all that, man, you want the comforter to come. But I really believe that all of this is, we're, we're getting to this place right now where this is about to happen. He says this in verse 1. Are you ready? Let's speak it. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon who? Everyone say me. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. Now I want you to know darkness is covering the earth right now. Amen. That means trouble. So trouble is covering the earth. But he says, look it. You're shining. You're shining. You may not believe that, but you're shining. Now, your mouth may nullify your shine. I can tell you that. Amen? For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. Now, look it. That means that trouble is covering the earth, but those who are not true followers of Christ, great Deception is going to invade them. Deep darkness to people, but the Lord will rise over you. His glory will be upon us. Does everybody see this? The Gentiles shall come to your light. You know, we're no longer Gentiles. Does everybody understand that? Okay. And kings to the brightness of your rising. This He's talking about us now. Lift up your eyes all around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar. Your daughter shall be nursed by at your side. Then you shall see and become what? Radiant. And your heart shall swell with joy. Because the abundance 
of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. The multitude of camels, I know we don't need any camels, but praise God. The multitude of vehicles shall come over to your land. <laughs> the dromedaries of Median and Ephraim, and those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense. They shall proclaim the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together to you, and the rams of Naprioth shall minister to you. They shall ascend with acceptance on my altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. Wow. So we see light and glory will be on his followers. Trouble over all the earth and great deception and trouble <laughs> to those who are actually disconnected. His anointing will cover us and many will see his glory upon you. We are there now. It's going to increase more and more. But there must be a change of heart. There must be a willingness to be connected. And there must be a willingness to deny yourself and desires and expose yourself. Remember, the Lord is our fulfillment. That must be something all the time led in your mind. Why? Because we are on battle mode. We're alert for warfare. So when the attack of the enemy comes, you must respond. Just like Jesus responded. You must respond. When a desire comes, you know. It's not God's time or God's will. You must reject it. No, Lord, you're my fulfillment. You know, people get rejected because, or they allow the spirit of rejection to come because God's not their fulfillment. That's the bottom line. Well, I was rejected. So what? Jesus didn't reject you. Amen? What's your problem? You. Selfishness. So where do you get it? Man, if you just allow the Spirit of God to bring you to that place, and you're, why? Because when you say, Lord, you're my fulfillment, are you writing your destiny? Yes. You're my fulfillment. Then you know what happens? He becomes your fulfillment, and everything else doesn't fulfill. Nothing else fulfills then. And all of a sudden, something comes across your path, and it's like, oh, cool. But he's still my fulfillment. Amen. I'm telling you, marriages are destroyed because of that. They're destroyed. Because they're, they're trying to get fulfilled from one another. N forget it. He's your fulfillment. When anything else becomes your fulfillment, you're out of order. Does everybody get it? Anything. Cars, money, whatever. Even your kids. When your kids are your fulfillment, you're out of order. He's your fulfillment and nothing else. Does everybody get it? Why? Because you're writing your destiny. You start speaking this stuff, you're going to fall into traps. Are you ready for more? All right, well, we'll go with more, one more, maybe. Isaiah 61. <laughs> it's a big jump here. Oh, happy days. Let's speak it. Are you ready? Verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be what? Called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may what? Be glorified. And we will rebuild the old ruins. They shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair the ruined cities. In other words, you're going to enter a whole new world. The desolations of many generations. Verse 5. Strangers will stand and feed your flock. 
<laughs> your sons of the foreigners shall be your plowmen and vine dressers. But you shall be named the priests of the Lord. They shall call you the servants of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory you shall boast. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. And instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double. Ever, everlasting joy shall be theirs. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery for burnt offering. I will direct their work in truth, and I'll make with them an everlasting covenant. And that is through the blood of Christ. Their descendants shall be known among the Gentiles and their offspring among the people. All who see them shall acknowledge them, that they are the prosperity of whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He's covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its bud, as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the world. Amen? This is where the bride is being glorified, by the bridegroom. What do we want to do? We want to stay on course. Your tongue. It's going to either maintain your course or throw you off. Be careful because it influence. Amen. Food of thought, food of thought, food of thought. Why? It becomes food. Thoughts become food. Be careful what you eat, digest, and accept. Is everybody cool? Did you get it? Are we going to put it to practice? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And we ask that you put a guard over our tongues, mind, and heart. And that you prepare us for what is about to be released. That we may be truly in our hearts and accept who we are in you. As a light from the greatest light to this world. For your name, for your glory, and for your honor. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Prepare your hearts for communion. You may bring up any ties and all.